You are and will always be an all-star. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 RuPaul's Drag Race queens that left too soon. Well, now was a lovely fourth runner-up. For this list, we're looking at the queens on the American versions of this show, all-stars included, who sashayed away too soon. Whether they were early favorites to win or were cut before they could showcase the full range of their talent, these contestants deserved better. If you haven't caught up, here is your spoiler alert. Who's your favorite robbed queen? Sound off in the comments. Number 20. Akira C. Davenport, All Star 6. It wasn't long before the season 11 finalist was back on our television screens. Miss Akira Chanel Davenport, she's back. In All Star 6, Akira landed in the bottom relatively early on and was eliminated halfway through the season by future winner Kylie Sony Glove. Due to her high placement on her previous season, she was thought to be an early contender for the crown. However, many felt RuPaul and company were very critical of her, even when fans thought she did well, like in the halftime performance challenge. We wanted a drag version of Prince, and I actually got like a more restrained version of Prince than I was expecting. Akira would later choose not to take part in the Redemption lip sync smackdown, as she had done what she wanted to do as an all-star. She may have been ready to leave, but we weren't ready to see her go. And even after this, Akira is still the team. Number 19, Mrs. Kasha Davis. Since she sashayed on home in 11th place in season 7, fans always felt this Rochester queen had a lot more to give. There's always time for a cocktail. She was campy, classy, and had an old school style of drag that was in short supply that season. Over the years, her name would get consistently thrown out as a potential returnee. And finally, she was invited back for the eighth edition of All Stars. My name is Mrs. Kasha Davis, and I'm an alcoholic. Oops, wrong meeting. <laughs> Though she only lasted three episodes, fans got to see a more enlightened Kasha Davis. Her spin on the iconic trademark exit line left all of us in tears. There's always time for kindness. Bring her back for All Stars 9, Rue. Number 18, Lanesha Sparks, Season 5. From the start, Lanesha was a queen to watch. I'm very excited to be here representing Perico, so. Yeah. Yeah. After coming up just short in the first main challenge, she won the lip sync extravaganza in the very next episode. But Lanesha, who is a Spanish speaker raised in Puerto Rico, was sometimes at a disadvantage due to the language barrier. Acting challenges like the Snatch Game threw her for a loop. She wore a dress made of blank. A can of tomato salsa. Like a big can? It made her elimination in week five all the more frustrating to watch. Still, her stunning looks and personality won the hearts of many fans. Also, we cannot forget her most enduring contribution to Drag Race history. She co-parented Lil Pound Cake with Alaska. All hail Lil Pound Cake. Number 17, Vanessa Vangie Mateo, season 10. 10, 10, 10 across the board. <laughs> ah! I'm Vanessa Vangie Mateo and get these cookies, baby. As the drag daughter of former Drag Race and All-Stars queen Alexis Mateo, Vanessa Vangie Mateo had a lot of pressure on her to succeed. I'm Alexis Mateo's drag daughter. Oh. Mateo. I, I don't remember her. Unfortunately, in the first episode, the Barbie doll dress she crafted was criticized for its shape, and after landing in the bottom two, Vanessa was sent home. But her exit was so strange, RuPaul and the other contestants couldn't stop referencing it all season, and neither could the rest of us online. Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. Though her elimination has become iconic, Vanessa's charm left us all wanting more of her. Thankfully, she returned the following season and had quite an impressive run. And now, because we know you are dying to see it again, here is the moment that Miss Vanjie broke the internet. Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. Number 16, Jan, season 12 and All Stars 6. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. That's how a lot of viewers saw Jen during her first season. My look just really encapsulates everything that I am as a drag queen. It's fun, it's flirty, but it's fierce. Despite consistently good performances and middle-of-the-road placements each week, she was eventually eliminated in eighth place. Jen, you are simply fabulous. And never forget that. Only about a year later, she was once again on the main stage, this time as part of the cast of All Stars 6. 
she came back strong with the same killer vocals, irrepressible energy, and drive to win. Jan's performance was about as consistent as the first time, but her critiques were all over the place. The judges didn't seem to know what they wanted from her. In the end, her fellow queens voted her out. But we are still not over the Jantasy. As we like to say on the internet, ugh, not this. Bye! Number 15, Denali, season 13. Sometimes storylines trump talent. That seemed to be the case with season 13's Denali. I am drag's gold medal bitch. The ice skating Chicago queen ended up in the dreaded pork chop loading dock in the first episode. However, she soon won over the viewers and her fellow queens with her genuine positivity and charm. But despite doing well overall, she only got one main challenge win. Many fans compared her trajectory in the competition to Jan's from the previous season. After several weeks of safety, she was sadly sent home at the top eight, and viewers felt there was just so much more to see. A skater with a whole lot of class and a whole lot of ass. <laughs> Number 14, Willem, season four. Willem made Drag Race history in season four as the first contestant to ever be disqualified from the show. At the reunion special, Willem explained that this was because of a contractual violation, but since then, she's claimed that the producers wanted her gone for criticizing working conditions on set. Despite ruffling plenty of feathers, Willem was a frontrunner on her season, with two challenge wins under her designer belt. The winner of this week's main challenge is... Willem and Latrice Royale. Her success as an actor, musician, writer, YouTube personality, and of course drag queen since being off the show has had fans desperate to see her return for a season of All Stars. We have certainly missed her sharp tongue on Untucked. Your tone seems very pointed right now. Number 13, Tatiana, All Stars 2. Maybe it's contradictory to say that an eliminated queen who later returned in that same season left too soon, but we stand by it. I think the other queens are thinking, all of this is really right. Drag Race had evolved so much since Tatiana's original season. When she returned for All Stars 2, she was a wild card. After all, she had been off the Drag Race radar for some time at that point. But once Tatiana killed the week one talent show, she proved she had what it took to win it all. These boys really need to know before calling me boo. She was eliminated after the Snatch Game, but her incredible lip sync to Rihanna's Shut Up and Drive won her way back into the contest a few episodes later. Though her victory was short-lived, she remains a highlight of a great season. Thank you. Number 12, James Mansfield, season nine and All Stars 8. We have to wonder how good the insurance is at World of Wonder because that season nine cheerleading challenge looked kind of dangerous. Few of the terrified queens came off well, but that the edit almost seemed to suggest that James Mansfield's elimination hinged on one weird stunt seemed really unfair. Miss James, girl. When she returned for All Stars 8, her brand of body comedy was on display all season. I'm ready to star in the bitch that's still All Stars, yeah! Although she never won a main challenge, she stayed in the safe zone for most of the season and was probably a close second place some weeks. This look, you know, you're giving us that drag sense of camp. It was a shock to everyone when Candy Muse pulled out her lipstick and sent her packing in episode six. Then again, it makes sense. James was true competition. Number 11. Aja, season nine and All Stars three. There's no denying that Aja had a lot of potential when she first appeared on season nine. Your edges are officially snatched. Yeah. She wasn't always the most refined queen, yet that's why it was so easy to love her. But when she came back for All Stars three, she was a brand new queen. It was such a bummer to see her go home roughly mid-season once again. Her dancing was electric, her looks were fierce, and her variety show performance even inspired an iconic meme. <laughs> all of the queens this season had their ups and downs, and it really could have been a toss-up as to who would win it all. With her underdog story, Aja had as good a chance as anyone else to snatch the crown. Sis, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Number 10, Max, season seven. Season seven is still polarizing, which is confusing considering just how great the cast is. Max, Max period. Max, just Max. Period, or capitalized, or any way you want to say it, or spell it. But fans often cried foul when queens were sent home too early. One of those queens was Max. 
often sticking to her gray hair despite Michelle Visage's objections, Max was beloved because she was not going to let anyone tell her how to do her drag. It's been well established by the Drag Race fandom that Max was done dirty by the seemingly unhinged edit in her elimination episode. Sure, she crashed and burned out of nowhere during the Snatch Game. I said temper tantrums. And you know why? Why? Because Ellen never has temper tantrums. But this, coupled with a bizarre wardrobe malfunction, made her exit episode feel awkward, uncomfortable, and kind of unfair. I feel like I've been in a dream this whole time, so for me to go back to Kansas from Oz, it's all so surreal, but there's no place like home. <laughs> Number 9. Mo Hart, Season 10 America, Mo Hart proclaimed herself to be the heart of season 10, and we believed her. Get a girl, twirl, sidewalk, sidewalk, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Sadly, she ended up in eighth place. The New Yorker may not have won any challenges during her time in the season, but she consistently wowed us and the judges with her handcrafted runway looks. Call her mother, Goose. <laughs> <laughs> She's totally winging it. I am giving you white and gold Phoenix. Monique was eliminated on her first time in the bottom two, mainly because she didn't know the words to the lip sync song. She don't know the words! We are sure that if she had learned the words and sent the vixen home, she'd have been able to give us even more makeshift creativity on the runway, and even more hilarious quotes. I saw it and I was like, oh, brown cow, stunning! Thankfully, this wouldn't be her last stint in the Drag Race franchise. Facts are facts, America! Number 8. April Carrion, Season 6 April Carrion proved she was more than just a pretty face during her time on season six. Yes! For duty. April Carrion is in the house. Yes! The Puerto Rican performer turned out high caliber conceptual looks week after week. From her high flying entrance look to her clever spin on the phrase April showers. April Carrion. April showers. Yes. I just got me all wet. To her Duck Dynasty couture in the season premiere, she had us impressed. April Carrion serving Tuck Dynasty. Ah. Is that a decoy in her pocket or is she just happy to see me? <laughs> Despite winning the approval of guest judge Adam Lambert, April finished 11th in the competition. You are gorgeous. You're gorgeous oh, as thank well. Thank you. <laughs> Since then, she snatched major pageant titles, walked runways for top designers, and became a headline act in her home country. Clearly, April should have made it further on Drag Race. April, my fierce, beautiful queen. Keep calm and carry on. Now, sashay away. Number 7. Alyssa Edwards, Season 5 and All Stars 2 Alyssa Edwards was one of the show's biggest presences of the show's fifth season, with everything from her heated rivalry with Coco Montrese to her sickening performance skills. Speaking of Coco, Alyssa's pageant nemesis sent her packing in sixth place on season five. Alyssa Edwards, the next time you look in the mirror, I hope you see what I see. A triple threat, a dancer, a beauty queen, and one fierce ass entertainer. Alyssa managed to outlast Coco when the pair returned for All Stars 2, only to end up being eliminated twice. Well, now was a lovely fourth runner-up. As the drag mother of queens including Laganja Estranja and Gia Gunn, and the owner of a successful dance studio, Alyssa's legacy continues to grow. Frankly, we'd love her to be on every season, and not just in cameo appearances. Oh, oh, oh. It's showtime, folks. Number 6. Adore Delano, All Stars 2 Some queens rock up to Drag Race fully polished. Adore Delano came to season 6 to prove that I just want them to know that I'm polished remover, bitch. And with three challenge wins to her name, she's definitely deserving of the title of most improved queen during her time in that season. After finishing in the top three, Adore's debut album also landed in Billboard's top three dance electronic albums chart. Going into All Stars 2, the fan favorite was in a strong position to repeat all of that success. Sadly, Adore decided to leave the competition in the second episode after finding it difficult to handle the judges' critiques. I am so forever grateful, and I love you like a family member. You've changed my world. I have to go. Mama Roo has been known to give third chances, so why not do it again? Number 5. Vivacious, Season 6 There's never been a drag race queen quite like Vivacious before or since. Mother yeah. has arrived. 
She was pure New York ballroom. Her club kid-inspired outfits were one of a kind, and her complete authenticity was absolutely dazzling to watch both in and out of drag. Considering how much mileage the producers have gotten out of Vivacious's catchphrases over the years, maybe episode three was too soon to let the season six queen go. We love you. Keep giving them life, mama! Clearly, she lives in the producers' heads rent-free. Let's face it, she lives in our heads rent-free, too. And how could we forget Ornacia? She just lives on our heads rent-free. Do you have a name for the head on top of your head? Ornacia. Ornacia, okay. Number four, Manila Luzon, All Stars 1 and All Stars 4. This season three runner-up always had the stuff to win the crown. Manila Luzon was hindered, as everyone was, by that controversial pair twist on the first All Stars. Not a box. <laughs> she and partner Latrice Royale went home halfway through. But when she came back for All Stars 4, Manila was a threat to win. At one point, she was in the top two three weeks in a row, and she had never been in the bottom. That is, until episode eight. That week's winner, Naomi Smalls, seemingly knew she might not have this chance again and dealt the death blow that was heard around the world. I'm so sorry that I have to send home Manila. What can we say? It just wasn't fair. Sadly, as a wise queen once said, Life's not fair. Life's not fair, so bitch, good luck. Number three, Tammy Brown, season one and All Stars One. Tammy Brown was one of the first queens to compete on Drag Race back in season one, and one of the first to return for All Stars. My name is Tammy Brown with an IE. Hi, I'm China. Hi, nice, nice to, to you. meet you. Hi. My real name is Keith. If I'm in drag or out of drag, I'm an entertainer. I am the character. After a poor performance of a Destiny's Child song, she landed in the bottom two in the second episode of the original show's inaugural season. Her decision to not truly perform the lip sync against Akasha meant she basically eliminated herself. I didn't have the song down, and I had made the decision before I went on stage today that I was gonna not do that song. Tammy didn't fare much better during her team up with Nina Flowers in the first season of All Stars either. Tammy Brown and Nina Flowers, you two are the definition of All Stars. Sashay away. Still, her outbursts that irritated her fellow competitors have made her beloved with fans, who are always eager to see more of her. Number two, Valentina, season nine and All Stars four. You're perfect, Some you're beautiful, them. you look like Linda Evangelista, you're a model. She's perfect, she's beautiful, she looks like Linda Evangelista, you know the rest. Valentina was the Miss Congeniality of season nine. Oop, sorry, we mean fan favorite. But many were expecting her to snatch the crown too. Wait, 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 wait. I just don't feel like you should be Miss Congeniality. From the first episode, her relative inexperience with drag didn't stop her from turning out stellar looks. Hello, it's me, Valentina. And performing strongly in acting challenges. Well, until episode nine. Oh, girl, are you okay? Oh, I thought a death drop means you really die. <laughs> In the lip sync, after being ordered to show her mouth, it became clear she did not know the lyrics. Oh, she doesn't know the words. But we knew she had more to give, so we were thrilled when she returned for All Stars 4. Sadly, she went home too early for our liking again, placing seventh. She has since started co-hosting Drag Race Mexico, so she's doing quite well. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Ben De La Creme, season six and All Stars three. Hi everybody, it's me, Ben De La Creme. <laughs> we first met this terminally delightful queen in season six, where she wasted no time in winning the first main challenge. Ben De La Creme. You were serving cheesecake and left us gagging for more. Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge. Yeah. She repeated the feat with her side-splitting turn as Dame Maggie Smith in the Snatch Game. And after barely putting a heel wrong, fans were confident she would be a finalist. I'm unfamiliar with the work of Lady Handler. However, I did think that it would be rather amusing if there were a libation flavored with citrus. 
can you imagine such a thing? <laughs> but after surviving one lip sync, Dela sashayed away in fifth place, creating a huge online backlash. Dela, girl, I love you, and I expect great things from you, because the cream always rises to the top. Now, sashay away. If that weren't shocking enough, she upped the ante when she returned for All Stars 3, eliminating herself in Episode 6 after a record five challenge wins. Though she has the Season 6 Miss Congeniality sash, we'd much rather see her with a crown. This is the easiest choice that I have had to make this entire season. I'm going home. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.